Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause sin will inevitably occur. But woe to the one through whom they occur. Good evening again, everyone. Good evening. I, have, uh, I have mentioned about the principles of uh, Catholic life. There are three. The first one is, uh, it happens here. We call it the comprehension of faith. And we call it faith-seeking understanding from St. Anselm. Okay. Faith-seeking understanding is the definition of theology. Theo, the word theo means God. Logi, you know, the study of the word, study God. So we seek understanding of our faith here at this liturgy of the world. This is called comprehension of faith. And then we come to worship, the expression of faith. Okay, we express the, the devotion, uh, the uh, divine mercy, chaplet, our benediction, exposition, the blessed sacrament, the rosary, and then the ultimate worship. We devote to the Lord, we worship Him. It is called the expression of faith to ourselves, to our own, to our own people, expression. And then the next thing is, we call it the manifestation of faith. We go home and we tell the good news. We become witness and the evidence of the love of God to one another at, at our, in our home, our family, relatives, friends. Go to your workplace and tell that you are children, the son, daughter of God, and be proud of it. And uh, we can show people our true faith by is choosing the way of the Lord. Now, let's return to what's going on here. Let's return to the comprehension of faith and then um, we will uh, know how to manifest <coughs> faith. As Catholics, I keep repeating myself again. I do not like it, but still, because uh, this is not a cliche, it is uh, truth, is the truth. Uh, St. Ignatius of Aloya, keeps, and he said that it takes an intelligent, intelligent man and woman to read the Bible, to read the Gospel, the Word of God. So we read the Word of God with our mind, with our intellect, to seek understanding of our faith. And so we think, we use our mind to think. The Lord said this, this is truth, this is the truth. Things that cause sins will inevitably occur. We start from there. That means scandals or temptations, we cannot avoid them, okay? They are there. They are there doesn't mean you have sinned yet, okay? We have not sinned because they are there. And let's take a look at this. What caused people to sin? What caused? As I observed during the week and uh, the day before, uh, last week, we celebrated uh, Saint uh, Charles Borromeo, if you recall. And uh, he was one of those counter-reformer. You know, the reformer reformation began with Martin Luther, who was a religious like I am, from the order of uh, St. Augustine, and he wanted to change the church from the outside. There, has, there was corruption <coughs> in the church, undeniable, but he wanted to change from the outside. He wanted to wash the dishes from the outside, not the inside, okay? And so he did that, and it caused a lot of division, schism in the church, but there, the Lord sends us many saints, like St. Ignatius Loyola, St. Teresa Avila, St. John of the Cross, St. Philip Neri, and then St. Charles Borromeo, who was a friend of St. Philip Neri. St. Charles Borromeo is a wonderful man. He, he taught us the principle of meditation. He said that, well, I pray and then I understand. I pray and then I understand. Meditate. Why a lot of priests during that time, they do not preach Jesus. And they do not have that fire. They do not have that zeal for God. And they do not understand the word of God. They talk about money, money, and money, and selling indulgence. And so St. Charles said, now, we need to do this. We need to meditate. Meditate before, meditate during, and meditate after. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think, every, even every pause in our, between our words, the silence, we meditate. It comes from the tradition of uh, 
of the Lectio Divina, you know, Benedictines and all the monastic tradition, from Lectio Divina, Oratio, uh, Lectio, Oratio, Meditatio, Contemplatio. I, I mentioned this before, I just repeat it again. So meditation means, meditari means to measure. So let us measure before, during, and after. Let us measure our life. I look back during the past week and uh, many, many events occurred and some of them just really was really striking and it was beautiful for me. One of those events was, uh, one of those things was yesterday after the 9.30 Mass. It just like imprinted in my mind. There was a little girl, seven, eight years old. After Mass, she, she came out and said, I want to talk to you, just keep waiting. And I said, okay, after I, sh I shake all the hands of the parishioners as they, as they come out of the church, and I said, keep, uh, wait for me a while. She, she kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And after everybody left, she was still there. And she said, Father, I would like to help out, to help save the children. Because of the homily about Samantha, you know, who wrote a letter to the American people, to her state legislators. I want abortion to be illegal. I want to make a law, 11 year, year old. Want to create a bit of a law. Huh? And this little girl, our own girl, she stayed there and she, she said, It was so beautiful. And she said, What do you want to do? I want to save the children, the babies. Well, imagine that. If we don't do that, the children will teach us. The Lord tells the children and said, Okay, I will help you. How about this? You will be the leader. I'll follow you. Okay, I'll support you. Tell your parents, tell your teachers, everybody, I'll support you. Let's do that. Children save children. That is wonderful. We, we need to meditate on that and we apply to our life here, the Lord said, there are scandals. Adult, adults are still a scandal. Children teach us about the love of God. And I, I observe, I see that um, for, for the, the men, for the boys, the boys follow the stronger man. Huh? They imitate the man. And then the girls, they follow the women. And this is why if we, we educate one boy to be a good man, it's only one person, one individual. If you educate a girl to be a good woman, we have educated a whole generation. This is from St. John the 23rd, okay? So that's what, and then Pius the 12th. We have to educate the women and the men as well. So the scandal comes from the adults. The children see, I, I told the story of me, when I was a little kid, I saw my uncle, my brothers, uh, they, they gather, they smoke, secret. Oh, interesting, it's very cool. So what did I do? I went home, okay, I went to smoke like that, you know, imitate. What do you do? You go home, you take a piece of paper and you roll it, like a secret, right? And then you get a match and you light it, and you start smoking and you start to <laughs> Imitate, just little people. You know, they, they imitate the adult. Scandal. Scandal. What's going on? Well. We need to rethink about this. I, I see people here, young people, young men and women, young. They, 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 they have this mentality. The mentality is, is, I have yet to decide whether I am a girl or a boy, a man or a woman. I have yet to decide. One day I will come out. What is going on, going on there? What is the problem with our education system? As if you can decide. You know, you're born and then you look at the, that is a boy, that is a girl. There's no doubt about it. But I have to, to decide what is going on. Something has entered into the, the mind, the psyche of our culture, of our people. We don't tell them. And then we have this problem of immorality. Even in the scouts, you have to decide to, you know, have to fight for morality. What is going on here? So we use our mind to think. Last night, I got a call from, from California. A lot of people call all over the country asking me what to vote, how to vote, why, why they vote, uh, voting. And uh, uh, this uh, lady, uh, she called in. And I said, you should have called me a month ago so I could help you out with the decision. And all this, she said this, you have two not so good people running for president. And one said on TV, 
publicly. You know, if I go out there on the street in New York and I shoot somebody, and you know, I, I could go scot free. You know, nobody will catch me. And he is saying that. And this, and then he's for capital punishment. And then this one, you know, is, she's for the poor. And then we think, right? And she's for abortion. So which would I choose? Should I choose? We use our mind and we think. Let us think. And this is what we should think about. No, here. For Catholics, we do not accept capital punishment. However, well, let us think of justice. Uh, do you remember the case of uh, Ted Bundy uh, executed here in Texas? Remember him? How many people he killed? How many women he killed? The last one was 13 years old, and uh, he got you know, so crazy that, uh, I'm sorry to say this, this is real, okay? Uh, they interviewed him and they discovered that he put the, the, uh, the member of this, these women in the freezer, and he ate them, cannibal. Now, I think it was not 23, but 26 count of murder. And if we leave him out there in the society, what would he do to the, you know, all the women and children? 13 years old, the last one he, you know, he, he murdered was a 13 years old uh, 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 Afro-American. And so we execute. But see, we execute because we found him guilty. Guilty. Let me ask the question now. For Catholics, we don't endorse capital punishment. We put him in prison for life, okay? But that, for a lot of people, that's not fair. Like, okay, Saddam Hussein or maybe Osama bin Laden killed a lot of people, terrorized. So we have justice. We have the and justice also. But now let us let us take a look at the, uh, this. Ask this woman, this lady. Suppose you know uh, how many how many people do we execute? I mean, capital punishment. Okay, these criminals deserve to die. How many people do we kill? In a year, do we kill these criminals? Guilty, found guilty. Okay, one million six hundred thousand criminals a year. Do we uh, execute them every year? Do we in the, the 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 state of Texas? No, and they are found guilty, really guilty. But these children, they are innocent. You put on that scale, and they have never gone to court or to you know to to the tribunal, never found guilty, but still we kill them every year. One million six hundred thousand. We use our mind, we think. We blind ourselves, you know, we don't want to see. We don't just want to, we refuse to see the reality. This is what we need to do here, here at the, the, uh, the liturgy of the altar of the world. We break the word and look at the reality and make sure we see it. And we don't see it like before, no, we don't see smoking is really, really harmful for the body, human body. And you see the lungs, if you go and see the lungs of the smoker, it is all black. It's really terrible. And the, the, the people who drink, you know, it shrinks the brain. Yes, it does that. Well, you see it, but we refuse to see. This is what we do. We, we study the Word of God to comprehend it. And we make a choice. I asked myself this question this morning, and I ask you again this question. It is not about, yes, I cannot, you know, the Lord said, Whoa, whoa, this word is like a curse to the one through whom they occur, or the scandal occur. I'm asking myself, it's not that I create scandal for other people, but do I create scandal for myself? Through whom I fall, I trip myself, the word scandal on in Greek, it means <laughs> to put a bait in the hook or to put a block in a stumbling block you know, on the way and people would trip and fall. Huh? Do I trip myself? Do I put a bait and I, I eat my own bait? Do I do that? Well, today, tomorrow, we may be doing it. Just one boat. We may be putting a tough stumbling block for somebody for the next generation, for ourselves. Really, we shoot ourselves in the foot. Really. Because of one book. Do I 
trick myself or scandalize myself. And then if I do that, then I will scandalize other people. We learn to do that, or to ourselves first. So that's the question. That's the question. Our choice. Let us pray. Let us pray. Again, the number is right there. 70 million Catholics in this country. 70 million. Suppose each Catholic, not just I'm not a vote for, you know, for Christ, for the baby, for life. Only me. I will tell other people. I will, I will clarify to them why I do what I do. Okay? Tell them. One more day, 24 hours, still there, you know, you can still serve, you can still save some lives. It's not, stop, it's not stopping yet. And even, we do not know what the result will be, but the fight for life continues on. We do not stop to fight for life. We continue. Whoever is going to be in charge on top, but the, the thing is, is, the question is not about condemnation, we will not condemn, we are not supposed to condemn anybody or criticize, but we are supposed to hold ourselves accountable. Whatever you say in public, and then you don't do what you say, okay? You'll be accountable. Let us make ourselves accountable for what we say. And also our leaders is about accountability. We don't condemn, the Lord condemns, but we hold ourselves accountable. And we hold ourselves accountable with that, with that one vote. We know all of us here, we're going to solve you already voted. Huh? And we need to go outside, tell all the people, vote for life, vote for Christ. And let us move on to the devotion, to the expression of our faith, and go out, manifest our faith. Amen. Amen. Amen.